Hi guys, welcome to another video. This, vid this video is on the properties of quintic graphs. So, properties of quintic graphs. We're going to be learning the properties of and how to f graph a quintic function. Uh, quintics are a higher power function family needed for the for pre-calc and the ACT. Uh, and then we can use a graphing calculator to graph a quintic and describe its key features. It is how we know we're going to be successful. So, let's get started. Uh, properties of quintics. One to five roots. Um, so a quintic is fifth degree. So we're talking fifth degree. And as such would be x to the fifth power. And so it can have up to five roots. Um, it has zero to four extrema. So we're talking about local maxes and mins. talking about local maxes and mins here and it has one to three inflection points so places where it's like going to turn around um, it has no general symmetry and it takes six points and six pieces of information to properly and accurately describe a quintic function the domain and the range of all quintic functions uh, barring very very few would be um, negative infinity to infinity. These graphs go on for forever in both directions. So all quintics are going to kind of fit into the category of negative infinity to infinity domain and uh, negative infinity to infinity for range. So here's just some sample quintic functions that I uh, pulled up. Uh, it's what they here's what they look like. You can kind of see features of other ones in there. You can see features of like quadratics. You can see features of uh, cubics. You can see um, cortex in there as well. Uh, these quintic graphs represent uh, various terms like being added to it. So um, you could be adding like plus 4x to the third, or you might have like a, my, a y intercept of like negative 1 in the first one, um, and things like that. The base graph of a quintic, y equals x to the fifth power, looks more like a steeper view version of a cubic graph. And the base graph of a quintic looks like this. So I took out my graphing calculator and I set the viewing window from negative 10 to 10 in both directions. And this is what it looked like. You can see that even after like one, so I'm at like negative one, and then between negative one and two, it goes off the graph. Uh, two to the fifth power, negative two to the fifth power would be negative 32 um, or positive 32. So it quickly goes off of the graph. Um, and yeah, you can just kind of get a feel for what the graph of a quintic um, looks like. But let's get started uh, with graphing some quintic. So graph the quintic function, list its key features. So key features, we're definitely going to want to list the domain. Uh, we're definitely going to want to list the range. We're going to want to list any local minimums. We're going to want to list any local maxes. We're going to want to list any, we're going to want to list the y intercept, uh, any x intercepts. And we are definitely going to want to um, list any, uh, the global max and the global min as well. So global max. So key features, global min. Okay, so I graphed this one ahead of time. And I've got uh, Google Chrome here with decimals pulled up. And decimals, it does a nice job of highlighting some of these key features. So I graphed y equals negative x to the fifth plus 2x cubed uh, minus x minus 3. Um, I have a zero here and it is the only zero so negative 1.547 so I have an x-intercept at negative 1.547 and zero switching back I have a uh, y-intercept at zero negative three so zero negative three and then I've got a bunch of local maxes and min, so I'm going to deselect these. I've got a local min 
and I have another local min. I have two of them right here. So my first local min is at negative one, negative three. So that is my first local minimum. Negative one, negative three. And then I have a second local min located at 0.447, negative three. So negative 0.447 and negative three. 0.286 and then I'm going to go and deselect those and I've got a local max at here and here so I have a local max at negative 0 0.447 oh excuse me the local min should be at positive the local max is going to be at uh, negative 0.447, oops, negative 0.447, comma, negative 2.714. And the other local max, the nice even one, was 1, negative 3. So 1, negative 3. Okay, so I've got all of my key information down here, y-intercept, zero, uh, local min, local max. Uh, the global max, if we look at our graph, is going to be positive infinity. You can see that it heads up towards infinity in that direction, and it also uh, heads down towards infinity in the other direction. So its local or its global minimum is going to be negative infinity, which then means that my range is going to be negative infinity, the minimum negative infinity to infinity. And then my domain is also going to be negative infinity to infinity as well. So there's all my key information. So now we're going to actually graph the quintic function. So if I go into Desmos, I'm going to hit the gear to turn on the table. Uh, negative 215 is going to be off the graph. But I can definitely at least like kind of mark it. So negative 215 is going to be like up here. Uh, negative 1 and negative 3 is down here. 0, negative 3, ne 1, negative 3, and then 2, negative 21. So 2, negative 21 is going to be here. And I'm going to use some of this other stuff here in order to kind of help me shape my graph. So um, at 0, negative 3, I have my y-intercept. I've got my two local maxes and mins graphed, uh, the even ones. So 0.447 and negative... 3.2986. This is going to be down here. And negative 4.47 and negative 2.74 is going to be here. And that gives me enough points and graphs in order to be able to uh, go ahead and draw the rough shape. Um, I've got to do this very, very carefully. Uh, this is going to. Uh, that wasn't so great, so I'm going to try it again really quick. Go up like this. And then you can see the graph is going to kind of do this like bouncy, wavy thing, and then shoot down like that off of the graph. So I'm going to just take my eraser and erase the excess down here really quick. So there it is. There's my quintic graph, and it's got some of those features on it. It's got local maxes and mins. And you can kind of see that it is a reflection of this graph here. Um, it's it's not quite as zoomed apart. Um, it This is going from negative 10 to 10 on decimos and then negative 10 to 10 here, but it's a little like clumped together, so it's a little harder for me to uh, draw it quite as nicely as on decimos. So we're going to do a second one. x to the fifth minus 2x cubed minus 1. Um, I'm just going to go back to the previous page and copy down. I am going to select all of this stuff here so I don't have to rewrite it. Save myself some time. All right, so I got to find the domain range, local mins, local maxes, y-intercepts, x-intercepts, global max, and global min. So uh, my knowledge of this is going to tell me, though, that the global max is infinity and the global min is negative infinity. So I'm just going to fill those in right away. The global max is going to be positive infinity and negative infinity, which leads me domain and range to be negative infinity to infinity, negative infinity to infinity. And then I got to do my y, all my y-intercepts, local mins, max, x-intercepts. So let's go back to the graph. So I've got a 
x intercept here, here, and here. So negative 1, 0 is going to be one of my x intercepts. Negative 1, 0. I've got another one at negative 1.1790. Negative 1.179, comma, 0. And then I have my last one at 1.1513. 1 1.1 1 .1 Five one three, excuse me. One point five one three zero, and my y-intercept is. So I'm going to deselect my x-intercepts. My y-intercept is at zero negative one, and then I only have one max and one. In. So I've got a max at negative 1.095, negative 1.095, and that's at 0 0.052, and the local min, 1.1095, and negative 2. Point zero five two. So there you go. Uh, there's all the key information for it. So let's actually go ahead and, and put some points on here. So I'm going to take some graph. Uh, negative 2 to 17, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, 0, negative 1, and 1, negative 2. So I'm going to be able to plot those three right away. So 0, negative 1, uh, negative 1, 0, and 1, negative 2. And then I can use my key points, my other information, to uh, graph the rest of it. So going back, I've got like this up here, like this. And then I have another 0 at negative 1. So I have another 0 here. So it just kind of peaks itself over the graph. And actually, I need to just move my coordinate a little tiny bit. And then I also have my minimum right down here. And then another 0, 1.53 and 0, like this. And then it's off the graph in both directions. So it's going to be off the graph like way up here at 2. And down here. So if you come in hot and you're I'm doing the best that I can. So that was not the that was not the greatest. Give it a couple shots. There we go. So that'll take that off the graph. You'll see it come up, you'll see it come down, come around like this, and then go up. And I just gonna erase that part right there. And go up and do it like that. And that, there it is. That's the graph of my Quintic with all of its key features. So in summary, guys, Quintic functions are fifth degree polynomials that have unique features up to five roots and no general symmetry. The base shape of a Quintic is a steeper version of a cubic. And we can graph a Quintic and list its key features based on um, being able to use our graphing calculators. That's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.